Welcome everyone to Chapter 1, Functions and Applications. Here we are in Section 1. This is functions from the numerical, algebraic, and graphical viewpoints. So in this section, it's going to be a lot of review, things that you've probably already seen before in one fashion or another, but the idea is that this material is so key, so critical, uh, that so much is built off of it that it's really worth us spending a little bit of time and making sure that we have some good foundations built. So let's get to it. The first rule of math, as I have written here, is that we do not like chaos. We like consistency, predictability, and that's why in math so often we start with this idea of functions. So functions. There we go. So here is the semi-technical math definition again, uh, reminding us what are functions. So first of all, a function is a rule that assigns an output number to an input number. So like I said, semi-technical math definition. Uh, the set of allowable input or input numbers here is called the domain. And the set of outputs is often called the range. And now you may uh, know some other terminology, right? There's definitely related terms that go to these things. For instance, output number, you may uh, recognize this as a dependent variable. Right? Usually this is related to this dependent variable thing, usually like y or something like this. The input number, this usually has something to do with the independent variable. So this is usually something like x or t or something like this. Now a remark here, right, to represent a set of numbers, like the domain or the range, right, these are set of allowable numbers, uh, right, to represent this we are going to use interval notation. And this is pretty common in most math classes, but let's do a quick review. So if I wanted to do something like say x was greater than zero. In interval notation we would use a parentheses and we say we can start at zero and we can go all the way up to infinity but we're not going to include zero and we're not going to include infinity, right? Infinity is not technically a real number uh, so that's why it gets parentheses. Now on the other hand if you want to do something like x is greater than or equal to zero so we now want to include zero then we would use a bracket. So bracket all the way up to infinity but not including and then finally, maybe one more example, if I wanted to do x is greater than 1 and it's less than or equal to 3. So we can go up to 1 but not including, so we're going to use parentheses, and then we can go up to 3 and we want to include it. So there's a bracket for 3. So this is the interval notation. Of course, you may sometimes graph these things, or you may have seen them in graphs. So let me just show you really quick what that looks like, right? So if I have my number line, and maybe I'm not including zero here, you might do something like an open dot here, and say all the numbers that are bigger than zero, but not including zero, so it gets an open dot. If you wanted to include zero, right, quite often you would do a closed dot here, something like this. And if you wanted to do the numbers from 1 to 3, so again our number line, so here's 1, here's 3, and I don't want to include 1, but I do want to include 3, so 3 gets a closed dot, 1 gets an open dot, so we can graph these things. This is nice one-dimensional graphing here. We only have x values, we're not yet dealing with y values. Okay, so these are the technicalities, right, what is a function? But I want to relate this back to, you know, real world situations. So something that's not a function is something like, well, most betting, right? So roulette, for instance. So I have a uh, picture here. Let me show you. This is roulette. Uh, this is like one of these classic casino games sort of deal. And this, the claim is that it is not a function. There's no consistency or predictability. Uh, that there's chaos here. So for instance, maybe I'm, uh, uh, typically when I go to the casino, I'm a pretty boring roulette player, right? Maybe I only bet on whether the outcome's going to be red or black. Uh, and that, you can kind of double your money, or if you're wrong, uh, you lose your money. So for instance, if I start with a $5 bet, two things can happen, right? Either I double my money and I get $10, or I lose my money and I get zero dollars, right? So this is not a function. There is not just one output that occurs here, right? The signs and output. So I guess the big thing here is that an is one, right? There's 
an output number, one output number to a given input number. So if I input five, five dollars into my roulette bet, right, there's two possible outcomes. There's two possible output numbers, zero dollars and ten dollars, right? So therefore, this thing is not a function. There's not any consistency or predictability or anything like that. So likewise, of course, if I'd spent $10 on my bet, right, I could either get a $20 payoff or I could get $0. Right? So again, there's kind of this duality. There's a couple different things that I could happen. Of course, roulette's a complicated game. You can make many different bets, um, but you know, just the simplest ones maybe, uh, you either double your money or you lose it all. Now, something that is a function is right, like going to work. So I guess maybe I'll write it up here. Something that's not a function is these roulette bets that I was talking about. Something that is a function is going to be an example like going to work. So for instance, let's imagine, uh, right, we have a job, all that good stuff. And if I spend one hour at my job, well, maybe I get like $10 or something like this. So this is a function. For every hour that I spend, I get $10, right? So I get $10 per hour. If I worked for two hours, right, then I would get $20 there's predictability, right? There's not, sometimes my boss gives me no money and other times my boss gives me my earned tender $20 or something like this. There's only an outcome, one outcome, one output number for a given input number, right? So this is a function. There's reliability, there's predictability. I can guess how much money I'm gonna make, you know, if I worked for 20 hours, right? There's some consistency to it. Now, quite often we graph these things, right? So if I wanted to graph something like this going to work, so here's one hour, right? This is my time axis over here. These are my independent variables, my input numbers, and then my output is going to be something like 10, $10, right? So this is my money axis right here. So if I work for one hour, I will get $10. If I work for two hours, then I will get $20, so on and so forth. And this is like a classic example of a function, right? This is, I mean, it's going to be a straight line here, right? Something like this. But all functions, right, they have domains. They have what are the set of allowable inputs, right? So for instance, here, it doesn't really make sense to talk about what if I work negative time, right? So maybe in this case, the domain would be, well, yeah, you can ask this function, how much would I make if I worked zero hours? Right? I'd get probably zero dollars. So I can input things that are equal to zero or bigger. Right? Something like this. And of course, as you go into more real world situations, you may not say uh, be able to work over 40 hours in a given week. Otherwise, uh, your employer may need to pay you overtime or something like this. So this is what the going to work function looks like. Roulette bets, right? If I wanted to try to graph this thing, let's imagine that I wanted to put in five dollars something like this. So this is money inputs, and there's also going to be money outputs. So if I put in $5, right, one of two things can happen. Either I win and I get $10, Ooh, how nice, or I lose and I get $0, right? Zero is right here, so this would be a dot right here. Likewise, if I inputted $10 onto the roulette wheel and maybe bet for red or black or whatever, uh, either I could win and I would get $20 or I would lose and I would get $0. So if you were to try to graph this, now I probably did not do a good job making you know a nice line like this. Uh, and actually, again, it doesn't really make sense to go have negative values. What does it mean for me to bet negative money? So two things can happen, right? So there seems to be kind of these two lines that are existing. This is the losing line, and this is the winning line, right? And so the claim is this is not a function. So let's move on to the next topic here, graphically, right? So this is, well, first we did the technicalities of what are functions, then we did more of the reality sort of situation. Uh, but one of the things that we wanted to do was a graphical viewpoint, right? What, are a, what is a function? So if our function is given to us graphically, you can tell it is a function because it passes something called the vertical line test. Vertical line test. So this is some classic test. You've probably heard about it before, but let's write it down just in case, right? For a graph to be a graph of a function, 
every vertical line, vertical line, must intersect the graph in at most one point. And the key here is at most. So let's go ahead and graph some things, and we're going to determine if they're functions or not. So maybe my first one will be something like this. This is a nice parabola. It comes to us from quadratic functions, right? And so, yes, you can see, maybe I'll choose a different color here. I do have the power. Let's do, ooh, uh, red. Why not? So here's a bunch of vertical lines. And every vertical line intersects at, at most, one point. So this is indeed a function, right? These lines right here and here probably do intersect, but they're higher up sort of deal. All right, let's do another one. Here's a function with maybe a restricted domain, something like this. So this function does not go on forever. So you can see that some of these vertical lines here don't intersect at all, right? Here, here, and here, they don't intersect at all. But luckily it says at most one point, right? So intersecting not at all, zero points, is fine. So there we go, they intersected at most one point. So this is the vertical line test. Let's do a quick uh, couple here, right? Things may not be functions. Well, I guess, ooh, even before this, let's go up here, right? So this roulette bet, the fact that there's two outcomes, 10 and zero dollars, you can see that this fails the vertical line test, right? So this is not a function. So if I had this picture right here, you could tell me that it's not a function because it fails the vertical line test. Let's do another classic not a function. So a classic not a function would be a circle, right? Something like this, not a perfect circle, but okay. So there are some vertical lines that don't intersect at all, that's fine. There are some vertical lines that intersect only once, and I'm happy with those, but unfortunately this is not true for every vertical line, right? Every vertical line must intersect the graph at most one point. Here is a case of a vertical line that intersects twice. So this is a problem, this will not be a function, right? So this is not a function, and then let's do one more here. This is our good old friend, the parabola, but now it's kind of turned on its side a little bit, right? So this would be something, if you were to write this down, well, it wouldn't be exactly this, but it would be something like x equals y squared. It's been shifted a little bit, but it'd be something like this. And it turns out, right, this is also not a function because there's a vertical line which intersects it twice, right? So long as you find at least one vertical line that intersects it twice, then you know it's not a function. All right, so those are some of the key ideas for section one, functions from numerical, algebraic, and graphical viewpoints. I'll see you next time, section two.